entrepreneurship is like jumping off a cliff and building a plane before you hit the ground, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's really tough. It's really tough. And, and so you get to these different stages wherein you have different self-doubt that comes through because you're playing a bigger game. You're trying to really expand and step into the unknown. Mm -hmm. This is Challenger Brands, helping you build better brands and businesses. Hosted by Illustrato, the brand development and creative agency for ambitious and audacious Challenger brands. Welcome to another episode of Challenger Brands, where we help brand custodians and entrepreneurs build better brands and businesses. I'm Lalaine Chubinitas, Managing Director here at Illustrato.co. We are a brand development and creative agency for ambitious and audacious Challenger brands. And today we have a very, very special guest in our show, and I'm super excited to have him here, Diren Harchandani, Transformation Architect. Diren, welcome to the show. Thank you, Lalaine. I'm Thanks for having me. I'm super, super excited. I mean, I can't even begin to, you know, to mention all your credentials because there's so much. So let me get through this, okay? So Duran specializes in empowering entrepreneurs to achieve eight-figure business success without compromising personal fulfill fulfillment and lifestyle. You're an avid transformation and leadership and mindset coach uh, representing leaders who are running companies that have 2.5 billion US dollars in combined revenue. That's a big deal. And you have over two decades of experience in scaling businesses across five industries and exited multiple ventures. So much uh, happening for you there, Diren. A Harvard Business School alumnus, he has also leveraged his business strategy expertise and 2,500 hours of coaching experience. You're incorporating NLP, quantum science, and psychology to transform leaders and organizations. And if that wasn't enough, you engage in ultra running, Ironman races, mountain climbing, my goodness, Duran, you, you put all of us to shame. <laughs> but I know after all of this, you are nature and family oriented, dedicated father and husband, dog lover, as you've said, and a passionate traveler who has explored over 70 countries in all of the seven continents. Duran, I know you have a lot to share with us. Please say hi to our uh, audience. And hi, listeners. everyone. Hello, Lelaine. So you remember, I, I wanted to share this with, uh, with your listeners. Mm -hmm. uh, the first time we met, mm -hmm. you walked into our office when we were working together. And yeah. You put this campaign, this amazing this campaign long, for us. This was a long, long time ago, it, it, about it seven was, years ago, I think. It was seven years ago, and you walked in, and you were impeccably dressed. Wow. So the business started <laughs> even before we discussed business. Yeah. I remember that. So mm -hmm. today I, I thought, you know what? Let me put a shirt on. I need to match Lelaine. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I'm in a t-shirt you know, or a hoodie. You know, but branding. I was like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. But come on, all of these things, Duran, how do you do all of these things to begin with? I think it really comes down to priorities, yeah. right? What do I get from these things? or from these activities is what I consistently ask myself. Mm -hmm. And if it's giving me value and it's actually elevating my level of, it re to me, it really comes down to, mm -hmm. is this activity making me more self-aware? Mm -hmm. Because I think that's the game behind all the games we play, mm -hmm. right? And we're gonna get into that today, but if I'm getting a level or I'm elevating my level of self-awareness, mm -hmm through these activities, I'm going to continue doing it mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm getting a better idea of, of what motivates me, what inspires me, what pushes me to the next level, mm -hmm. what allows me to be a better father, mm -hmm. a better husband, a better coach, mm -hmm. a better entrepreneur. I, I love the fact that you're living a full life, you know, because for most of us, I think, especially when you're trying to build a successful business, for example, most of the time it gets so, you know, onto one side one of your life, right? Yeah. So we're gonna be talking about that. And it feels like, you know, th this is gonna be like a, a mountain of stuff that we have to dissect Let's and, go. you know, di dice and slice together. But, you know, you were not like this always, right? I was so interested when I read about your story on your website and I, and I want you to share that, but let me just preface this. Guys, Diren teaches leaders um, you know, in, in corporate um, establishments and also C-suite executives, so top level executives to improve their game, not just in business, but also in life. Now, I want you to tell us how this, how did it come about? And you said that you started from rock bottom. I'd love for you to share your story now. 
So my story is out there. Uh, I've discussed my story on a number of different mm -hmm. podcasts. And essentially what, what I went through was a dark night of the soul. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I started questioning my, my purpose, my identity. I'm not going to get into the, the story of how I hit rock bottom, mm -hmm. but what I will share is that, and the reason I'm not going to share it is because it's out there mm -hmm. for, for listeners. It's on my website. Yeah. But one thing I do want to share is that once you hit rock bottom, there's nowhere you can go but up. Mm -hmm. And what I want to share with the listeners today is how did I actually get from where I was to, you know, to evolve from rock bottom mm -hmm. to, to, to basically essentially getting out of it. Right. And, and I think, you know, so this happened a few years ago, about eight years ago now. And back then, you know, mindfulness, meditation, mental rehearsal, transformation, neuroscience, all these different modalities were, were not trending mainstream the mm -hmm. way it is now, right? These days you, you know, you, you go to the, um, the bookstore and you're seeing books and listening to podcasts and you're exposed to all this information around self-development. Mm -hmm. Yes, self-development has always been there, but it hasn't been mainstream. Mm -hmm. And so I was at rock bottom for a lot longer than I would have liked to be mm -hmm. because I didn't have that, that role model, the guides, the coaches that put a mirror in front of me mm -hmm. that I do now. So for people who are going through really challenging phases in their life, mm -hmm. I would say, the, the most important thing that you can do is to find someone who's going to take you, who's been through it mm -hmm. and knows exactly what the steps are mm -hmm. to break out of that, mm -hmm. that rut, that, that, um, being stuck in that space. You need somebody to yank you out of that space. Absolutely. Yeah. You need someone who's been through it. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like in, in any facet of life, right? I mean, let's take let's take physical fitness, right? If you really are serious about your health, you're going to engage with someone who has the expertise, mm -hmm. who has the specialty to actually, you know, take you through that journey. And so that's something that I did not do as, you know, um, when I should have. And as a result, I lingered. But, you know, in hindsight, being in that space a lot longer than I should have been, taught me a lot of lessons. Mm -hmm. It taught me a lot about myself mm -hmm. and it made me question, what is it that I really want? Like, what am I optimizing for, mm -hmm. right? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as I came out of it, I mean, looking back now, reflecting back, I have, I work with four coaches, mm -hmm. four coaches that are all working in different facets of you know, of my life, mm -hmm. right? So be it a physical fitness coach, a mindset coach, mm -hmm. a business coach, um, an energy coach. I think it's important to, to surround yourselves with people that are going to take you to that next level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So from hitting rock bottom, having the coaches, you know, exiting these ventures, you know, you've had these successful businesses, <clears throat> now life coaching, what made you go from this point to that point and now become a life, I mean, not a life coach, but a transformation architect? So I found that when I came out of it, I, you know, it, it's, it's uncanny how life works, right? When you go through something, you then attract people who are going through a similar challenge. Mm -hmm. It just happened. And I was asked to to mentor a few entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And I found that these entrepreneurs, as they were scaling their business, so mm -hmm. I would engage with them to work on their outer game. Mm -hmm. The outer game being, you know, everything that we learn in, you know, the business books, mm -hmm. right? How to scale a business, yes. how to, you know, come up with a marketing strategy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, something that you do exactly. all day long, mm -hmm. right? How do you come up with a pricing strategy? Mm -hmm. How do you develop culture? Mm -hmm. How do you develop a team? So we were working on Outer Game and I noticed that over time, they started achieving success in their business. 
But as they were achieving success in their business and as their businesses started scaling, it was at the cost of their inner game. Mm -hmm. It was at the cost of their relationship with self. It was at the cost of their relationship with family. It was at the cost of, you know, their self-esteem, their confidence. So other aspects of their life started breaking down. Mm -hmm. So I asked myself, well, this is exactly what happened to me. I was winning the outer game. Mm -hmm. Anyone from the outside looking yeah. in would say yeah. successful in a very narrow definition of mm -hmm. success. And I think it's sad that this seems to be more the norm, right? This is more common than, uh, than having a balanced life. I, I think, think it's a human journey. Mm -hmm. I think it's the human journey. We, we get to a point where we end up really focusing on one part mm -hmm. of our life mm -hmm. and, you know, it, it 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 happens at the cost of other aspects. And I'm not a big fan of, of balance. I don't think, I think balance is a myth. Mm -hmm. I think we go through phases where, you know, we go through phases where we focus on one part of our life, but it doesn't have to be, you know, at the expense of other parts of our life, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We go through these extremes mm -hmm. and that's what I went through. Mm -hmm. I went through this extreme wherein, you know, I was really focused on the outer game. I was running multiple businesses, had a successful exit. You know, I had the house on the golf course, the sports car, the mm -hmm. watches, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, all the trappings of success, but internally I was not fulfilled. I was not complete. Mm -hmm. uh, there was something that was missing. I was not connected with, with myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what led you there, which was not by design, I think. Right. So you, you pretty much stumbled on into this, of uh, teaching others, coaching Com others. Completely, completely. It wasn't something that I said, okay, this is, this is what I want to do. I was called upon to mentor a few entrepreneurs and I saw that they were having success. And then, you know, parts of their life were breaking down. And I thought, okay, well, let me roll up my sleeves. I'd just been through this. Mm -hmm. Let me share some of my experience, mm -hmm. some of the tools that I've picked up along the way. And we started seeing that recalibration. Mm -hmm. And that's when I discovered that to win the outer game, to play a really big outer game, we have to first win that inner game. Exactly. Yeah. It's crazy, right? Because we sacrifice the inner game to play that outer game when in fact the outer game suffers when our internal lives are completely. And it's counterintuitive. Poorly. It's yeah. so counterintuitive yeah. because it, it's one of those mistakes of intuition. It's like, you know, how do you how do you jump a horse? Mm -hmm. Like if you want a horse to jump, you know, usually people say, or I used to say, I lean back. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's actually the opposite. You lean forward mm -hmm. to get the horse to jump. Mm -hmm. And I used to believe that to have outer success, I had to focus on just that exclusively. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that to win the outer game, I had to first win the inner game. It mm -hmm. was one of those mistakes of intuition that we all make. Mm -hmm. OK, we will talk about the inner game in just a while. But I wanted to delve into this concept that you were talking about that got you out of this you know, this rock bottom phase that you were in in your life, you were talking about essentialism. Yes. Can you explain to us what essentialism is? Great question. So essentialism is, so we let a lot of things in our life. Um, I'll give you an example. How many times have you said yes to something and shortly after regret it? Too many, I think. Too many we, times. We, yeah. I mean, we don't know how to say mm -hmm, no, mm -hmm. right? We say yes to things that we're 20, 30% committed to, mm -hmm. right? Or we say yes to things that we're not happy about doing it now, but we'll say, you know what? Okay, we'll do it in the future. We'll do it a month from now or two months from now. But I always say, if you don't want to do it today, what makes you think you're going to want to do it two months from now, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So essentialism is basically the pursuit of less. It's being really objective and focused on the things that truly matter. Mm -hmm. Because most of the things that we say yes to are commitments, um, new campaigns, new ideas. A lot of that is distraction, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So essentialism is about really focusing on what brings 80% of the results in our life, in our relationships, and in our business. So it's the pursuit for less. 
I gather that might be difficult for a lot of people, especially the kind of people that you coach, right? How do you say that? Because it's always about saying yes to opportunities and there's always a lot of distraction, especially at that level in, in businesses. Yeah. So I think it will be hard for most people to say no. So one of the mindsets I, I you know, I, I share when with mm-hmm. entrepreneurs that are in that situation is that for every yes, so say today, right? We're doing this, mm-hmm. this interview. Mm-hmm. We're doing a podcast episode. What are you saying no to? What are you saying no to by being here in Meetings. front of me right now? There are other things that you're saying no exactly, to, right? Yeah. Now, is the value of those things that you're saying no to higher, or is it going to take you closer to your goal than this, than 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 this right now, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So every time we say yes to something, essentially we're saying no to something else, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and being really clear that. and objective of what are you saying no to, and if you're saying no to something that is of higher value or is more aligned with your purpose mm-hmm. and is going to move you toward what you want, mm-hmm. then that yes should have been a no. I love that. Let's let's capture that again. Yeah. So every time you say yes to something, you're saying no to something, right? Absolutely. Because we only have, um, you know, we don't have an infinite number of hours in the day or an infinite amount of energy, right? So we really have to be choosy. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really about an, an energy management, right? So essentialism is mm-hmm. is to that point. That's a great point you just brought up, which mm-hmm. is, you know, you have a finite amount of energy, mm-hmm. right? How do you actually want to devote and deploy that energy? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How did essentialism help you in your journey, Duren? So essentialism helped me in my journey in many ways. I mean, to start with, it really got me very clear. It crystallized for me what my priorities are. Uh, it, it also allowed me to be really objective on, so th- there's another mindset in essentialism, which is if it's not a hell yes, mm-hmm. then it should be a no. Okay. Right. All right. I mean, you have to be, if, 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 it doesn't make you feel alive, Mm -hmm. then you shouldn't be doing it, Mm -hmm. right? Life is too short. This sort of reminds me about Marie Kondo saying that, you know, if it doesn't give you joy, then you should not have it in your house. Absolutely. So it's being very picky about things. Marie Marie Kondo is is the, um, she's the queen of decluttering, Mm -hmm. right? Now decluttering is a process, Mm -hmm. right? It's a process. What happens after that is essentialism. Mm -hmm. So just to put this in context, if you're in the process of decluttering your life, you're removing the Mm -hmm, mm non-essentials. But once you've removed everything, you've decluttered your life. Now, essentialism is a lifestyle. It's about maintaining Mm -hmm. and sustaining that mindset. Mm -hmm. Now you made me think. I'm calculating in my head, (laughs) you know, the number of things I have to say no to now. Absolutely. And, And it's really hard to say no. Yeah. Right? Because we, we, at one level or at some level, we want to, we want to please people, mm-hmm. right? We want to make people happy, mm-hmm. but at what cost, mm-hmm. right? By saying yes to something, yes, you're making that other person happy, but how does it make you feel, mm-hmm. right? Is it is it moving you closer toward what you want mm-hmm. or away from what you want? And, and really that's what it's about, right? In coaching, I always say, you know, there's, most people are trying to move toward what they don't want rather than move toward what they want, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? It's like when someone says, I wanna grow my business, right? But the focus isn't actually growing their business. The focus is cutting cost, Mm -hmm. right? So you're actually moving toward cutting cost. You're not moving toward growing your business. So the approach that you're taking is completely, you know, different from, scaling mm-hmm. your revenue mm-hmm. or your profitability, for mm-hmm. example, mm-hmm. by by expanding the business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's yeah. the same in brand marketing, you know, like, for example, we have a lot of um, companies that talk to us about being thought leaders, but they can't shed the fact that they want to be everything for everybody. Yeah. Right. Because if you want to be an expert in something, if you want to be, um, you know, considered as a thought leader, you have to specialize. You need to shed everything else, all the distractions. Yeah. 
I love the fact that this has applications both in life and in, in work and in business. Absolutely. I mean, es essentialism, like I said, is a lifestyle that can be applied, that lens. It's a lens. It's mm -hmm. a filter in how you, you know, there's so many filters, right? We have our values are our filter. Mm -hmm. We make decisions based on our values, mm -hmm. or at mm -hmm. least we try to, right? When we're conscious of our values and we're really aware of mm -hmm. that filter, then we're able to make those decisions more in line with mm -hmm. our values. Another filter that we that we have is our our experiences, our memories, our attitudes, mm -hmm. right? Our beliefs. Essentialism is one of those filters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's. I'll give you an example. So in 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 the valley. Um, they've been, a few entrepreneurs have popularized this decision or this mindset of decision fatigue. How can I make, you know, the minimum amount of decisions mm -hmm. in a day mm -hmm. so that I can really focus and have the level of energy that I need for the important essential mm -hmm. decisions. Mm -hmm. So they delegate as many of the decisions that they need to make. Mm -hmm. One of them being wardrobe, for example, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like there have been a number of CEOs that are very focused yeah. on just wearing Mark black. Zuckerberg and his gray t-shirt. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. It, it all connects to, mm -hmm. you know, decision fatigue. Mm -hmm. How can I make the minimum amount of decision so I have the energy that I need mm -hmm. to really be focused? I love that. Um, what would you say um, to entrepreneurs who want to get into this, use essentialism as um, a lens, a filter in their life? there's always that adjustment period, which might be a little bit disconcerting, right? Because now you have to shed all of these things that you used to do. What's the advice there? One of the advice I would say is, um, or what, what, what's worked for me is asking myself, with everything that I do, what's the long-term value? Mm -hmm. And if there's a high level of long-term value, I'm not talking about short-term, but medium to long-term value from this activity, mm -hmm. then we should be doing it, right? Uh, the, the advice is to be more mid to long-term focused mm -hmm. and ask ourselves, what is the long-term value of this decision, of this commitment mm -hmm. that we're making? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's very important. I'm going to adopt that now. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. try as much as possible to try and become an essentialist. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know how that goes. I'll, I'll yeah. let you know how that yeah. goes. And I'm going to be asking you for a lot of advice. I want to talk about mastering the inner game now and a lot of the problems that entrepreneurs are facing. But before that, please allow me to thank our uh, our long-term partners, Rove Hotels. Rove has always been supporting us with this podcast. So thank you very much, Rove Hotels. This is Challenger Brands. Please subscribe to our channel and share our content. Follow us on our agency's social media pages, illustrato.co, on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. Or subscribe to our newsletter via our website, www.illustrato.co. Thank you to our sponsors for today's episode. Rove Hotels. Rove Hotels are a jumping off point for city explorers, simply designed for the young and young at heart. Born in Dubai, Rove is an award-winning lifestyle brand offering well-designed hotels, fuss-free service, and great value in well-connected locations. More than just a bed for the night, Rove provides rovers the missing link to connect you to the city like a local and explore the track less trodden in a relaxed environment where you can be yourself. With sustainability, local art, and high-performing functionality at the heart of its brand, Rove represents a new niche of hospitality for the digital nomad looking to become part of the neighborhood, even when they're just passing through. Please check them out at rovehotels.com. So we've learned about essentialism and how we should be shedding, you know, distractions and saying no to what really doesn't matter in life to us. Now, Duran, I want to talk about being stuck mm. and mastering your inner game. Yes. Let, let's talk about the problems that you encounter with the people that you that you train. What's the usual problem? I know being stuck is a general term, but what's what what's the usual uh, problem when people come to you? Great question. So essentially, there are two types of entrepreneurs, leaders, mm -hmm. teams that come to me. The first type are one, the ones that have a very clear goal, 
Mm-hmm. You say, you know what, Darren, that's the goal right there. I could see it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and they're going to be successful because they're high performing individuals and teams, but they're looking for an external catalyst to accelerate the process. Mm-hmm. So they're going to get there but they want to get there faster and mm-hmm. they're very clear on where they want to go. Mm-hmm. Then there are type of people who they, they know that there's another level. They know that there's another level. This can't be it. They're basically at that point where they're kind of breaking, they're yeah. trying to break through, but they're not able to break through. Mm-hmm. And so they are looking for someone to facilitate and reveal some of their blind spots in mm-hmm. order for them to be able to access that next level of performance, be it in their business, in their health, in their relationships, um, in their self-mastery. And then there are type of people who basically say that, you know, I have a problem, mm-hmm. right? This is the problem. This is it, right? This is what it looks like. Uh, I don't know how to solve it. And those are my favorite. Mm -hmm. And the reason those are my favorite is because two, so when you look at problems, right, all problems fall into two buckets. Every problem that we have, every problem that everybody in this room has falls into two buckets. Mm -hmm. The first bucket is the reason it's a problem is because we have some limiting belief that's Mm -hmm. created that problem. Mm -hmm. And if you tell me that, you know what, they're in this, this problem, it's not a limiting belief. Mm-hmm. Then it falls in the second bucket. And the second bucket is it's un, it's an unprocessed emotion from the past mm-hmm. that is creating that problem. We're bringing that unprocessed emotion into the present that's now making that situation mm-hmm. into a problem. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So the, these are the common issues of the people. These are the common challenges. And Mastering your inner game is the common catch-all solution for all these problems, right? It's it's definitely one of the dimensions. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's the foundation mm-hmm. to everything else that we build on top of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Big question. Yes. Take us through the framework of mastering your inner game. Okay. So what is? Let's yeah. define it. Mm-hmm. So everything. So the inner game is basically the lens that you use to see your your business, your career, your relationships. It's the lens that you use to look at your life, Mm -hmm. right? And that lens is shaped by how you think, how you act, Mm -hmm. and how you feel. Essentially, your personality. Mm -hmm. And it's also shaped by the conversation that we're having in the privacy of our own minds, Mm -hmm. right? And that conversation can be a really empowering conversation. It can be, it can sound something like, Lelaine, you're a great leader. Mm -hmm. Your team thinks you're phenomenal. Or it could be conversely, it Mm -hmm. could be a very disempowering voice. It could be, Darren, you're too young, you're Mm -hmm. too old. Mm -hmm. Or what I hear most often, you'll never be successful, Mm -hmm. right? Or I'm not good enough, right? The self-sabotaging voice. The self-sabotage, exactly. Mm -hmm. And and when entrepreneurs are basically going through that journey, entrepreneurship is the toughest journey there is out there, Mm -hmm. right? Because you're, you know, someone said recently, entrepreneurship is like jumping off a cliff. Have you heard this quote? Yeah. Hoping that um, a parachute will uh, come out or that, something? That's one, yeah. that's one side of yeah. it. But this quote is, you know, entrepreneurship is like jumping off a cliff and building a plane before you hit the ground, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's really tough. It's really tough. And, and so you get to these different stages wherein you have different self-doubt that comes through because you're playing a bigger game. You're trying to really expand and step into the unknown, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And the unknown is a scary place, right? Because our brains are constantly, our brains are prediction machines, right? We were just talking about before we filmed on how the unknown is a really scary place to be because we can't predict what's going to happen next. That's true. When we're in the unknown. Mm -hmm. And your brain wants to know what's going to happen. And now it's moving from the unfamiliar, the unpredictable, the unknown into, you know, something that we've never experienced before. Mm-hmm. So, so you, 
so the inner game is basically that conversation that we're having in the privacy of our own minds. It's that self-belief mm -hmm. that really influences how we navigate the challenges that we face. Mm -hmm. Take me to the process of you helping other people master their inner game or what would be um, considered as the main tenets of your training? Yeah. How do you train them? Yeah. How do you take them through the paces? What do they have to go through? So we do a self audit. Mm -hmm. um, one of the first things we do is an extensive self audit. You go through self audits of uh, your business, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And through that audit of the business, we're able to really do an appraisal of where the business is, mm -hmm. what's worked, what's not working, right? What do we need? Where are the gaps? Where are the opportunities? So we go through a very similar process. Mm -hmm. It's an extensive self audit of the individual. Once we're done with the self audit, we now work on a lot of the filters that shape how we see our reality, mm -hmm. right? Because our reality is not one that is formed outside in, right? It's an inside out game, mm -hmm. right? We shape how we see our reality. We shape how we see our business, mm -hmm. right? And so the inner game is really the game behind the game. Mm -hmm. It's the business behind the business mm -hmm. because if the entrepreneur has a very high level of self-belief, mm -hmm. then they're going to be able to break through and overcome and solve situations, any challenge that they're essentially facing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yep. so to answer your question, mm -hmm. we use modalities or I use modalities from NLP mm -hmm. to neuroscience, neuroscience being really understanding the process of change, mm -hmm. right? Have you had success with transformation in the past. Of course you have. We've all had success in change. We wouldn't be here if we don't know how to go through that process. Mm -hmm. But most of the time it's unconscious. We're not, we're, we're going through transformation, we're going through change, but we're going through it in a very unconscious mm -hmm. way, right? So what we're doing is we're becoming more conscious of the process of change. Mm -hmm. And when we're conscious of the process of change, now we know what it's going to take mm -hmm. in order for me to be able to overcome this challenge. Mm -hmm. Like, what is it gonna take for me? How do I need to recalibrate the way I'm thinking, yeah. the way I'm acting, the way I'm feeling, right? Because most people, so to answer your question, you said, you know, where, do, where are people, right? Or entrepreneurs when they come to a coach? They have a goal. They're basically, essentially, what does a coach do? They take you from here mm -hmm. to here, mm -hmm. right? Now, the coach designs that journey, right? And that journey is designed with different interventions and tools. Mm -hmm. But in order for you to say that there's a goal that you want, what you're saying is that that thing is not in my life right now. Yeah. The mm -hmm. reason you want it is because it doesn't exist in your life. You have to at the realize moment. that. Yeah. You have to realize that. So the reason it doesn't exist in your life right now is because the individual that doesn't have that in their life right now, mm -hmm. right, needs to be a completely different person mm -hmm. in order for them to have that thing, mm -hmm. to have that business, whatever the goal may be, mm -hmm. right? So they have to be a different person. And what I mean by that is they have to think and act and mm -hmm. feel differently, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we have a blueprint in which we take entrepreneurs and leaders through and teams through mm -hmm. to actually embrace change. Yeah. It sounds a little bit daunting. And I think mastery sounds like a long process. It's This is not a short process, right? How long does it take for some change to happen or for that mastery to kick in? And what would be some examples of successes that you've seen? You know, maybe you can share some examples of seeing entrepreneurs go from, you know, one point to the other and what did that do to their life? Yeah. So the first question you asked me, you know, in terms of mastery, mm -hmm. yes, it's called master your inner game. And by mastering your inner game, I mean knowing how to approach change mm -hmm and having that level of self-awareness. But the inner game is an infinite game. Mm -hmm. 
you never get to a point where you've mastered it because life is constantly evolving. Yes, right? that's right. We're, you know, when we, when we reach the summit of the mountain that we're trying to climb, right? It doesn't end there. Then mm -hmm. there's another summit. Yes. There's another challenge, mm -hmm. right? So we go through this journey and it's going to require a different version of ourselves, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so it's the infinite game that we play. But if we know how to approach change and we have that blueprint, now we have, that, because we have that blueprint, we're able to go through change in a lot more, in, in, a, in a much more seamless way mm -hmm. where, you know, you can change, my mentor usually sa says, you can change in times of pain mm -hmm. or you can change in times of joy, mm -hmm. right? So once you understand the blueprint, you're constantly changing even when things are going well, mm -hmm. because you know that next level, right? Yeah. This person, right? The way I'm thinking, acting and feeling right now got me here, but it's not going to get me there. It's not going to take that's me very, to the next that's level. That's a very good point. Yeah. So you, it, it's a constant, it's a constant process of reinvention, mm -hmm. of shedding skin, mm -hmm. right? Shedding old beliefs, old thoughts, old feelings, old behaviors, right? To be able to now be that person that's going to attract that next level into their mm -hmm. life. I like that. That's very important. So it's always about evolving. Before you share some examples, Duran, so do, do you actually see people changing their personalities through this process? 100%. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, so when, when you go through that self audit, right, and someone puts a lens or a, a mirror in front mm -hmm. of you and you see very clearly that, okay, you know what? Yeah, this is it. Like you're, you're able to put your finger on what's keeping you back or what's keeping you from accessing your next level, mm -hmm. it creates this open loop in your mind mm -hmm. because now you know what's at stake. Now you know what it is that you're doing because up to that point, it's it's the market, mm -hmm. it's inflation, mm -hmm. it's, you know, the, the price at the pump is going up. My kid's tuition fee is yeah. going up faster than, you know, my profitability, mm -hmm. my EBITDA can, is mm -hmm. not able to keep pace. I'm not able to grow my business because there's cost escalation. It's always something outside that's creating that personal reality, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But as soon as we're able to break free from the mindset that it's something external mm -hmm. and it's actually our thinking, acting and feeling that's creating our personality, mm -hmm. right? That's when we break through. So I'll give you an example. Um, so your personality is made up of how you think, act and feel, mm -hmm. right? So the present personality that's sitting on that chair today mm -hmm. has created the personal reality called Lelaine's life, mm -hmm. right? Now, in order for you to change your personal reality, you're going to have to change your personality because nothing changes you until change, you yeah. change. Exactly. Right? And as soon as that penny drops and mm -hmm. that shift takes place, so the process of change, you ask me, well, you know, how long it could be really daunting. It could be taking, it could take a really long time. But if you think about the process of change, so when I turned 40, mm -hmm. just a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll take that when, at face value. When I took, when I, when I mm -hmm. turned 40, thank mm -hmm. you. When I turned 40, the process of turning 40 took 12 months, mm -hmm. right? It took 12 months, yeah. but the moment of change happened in an instant, mm -hmm. right? When that clock struck midnight, I turned 40. Mm -hmm. So the process of change happens in an instant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or the shift happens in an instant. The process can, can take some time, mm -hmm. right? But then again, what is time? It can happen in one session. It can happen in two sessions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It can happen when, when you're sleeping. It can happen in the shower, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it depends per person, right? It really depends. I mean, when, when you individual. explain it, Diren, that, you know, our inner our inner game or our inner personalities, what shapes our reality. It seems very reasonable and sensible, right? But I don't know why people don't get that. Most of us are at the mercy of the elements, right? Like you said, complaining about uh, inflation, complaining about the prices and all of this, not understanding that we can command our own future there. Yeah, absolutely. There's a law 
So let me ask you, do you believe in gravity? Of course. You believe in gravity, yes. right? But guess what, Lelaine? Mm -hmm. Gravity doesn't care if you believe in it or not. Mm -hmm. It's going to do its thing. Yeah. Whether you believe in it, it's not a belief you have. It's a law, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if I drop my phone, mm -hmm. it's going to fall to yeah. the ground, whether mm -hmm. or not I believe in gravity. That's true. There's another law called cause and effect, right? Every cause has an effect. Do you mm -hmm. believe in that? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So you can live life on the cause side or you can live life on the effect side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On the effect side, the mindset is, you know, there's nothing I can do about exactly. it. Exactly. This is, this is, you know, it's a recession. It's COVID. Everybody's it's, suffering. I'm suffering. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. It's, it's basically, you know, I'm, let's call it victim mindset, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? The effect, staying on the effect side is the victim mindset. Mm -hmm. The cause side is a more empowered state of mind, which is if it's in my life, I created it. And if I created it, I can change it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, there's certain things that are out of your control. Mm -hmm. Yes, without a doubt, right? But if you maintain that mindset of if it's in my life, I created it. Mm -hmm. And if I created it, I can change it. It just puts you in a much more resourceful state, mm -hmm. right? It puts you in the game, on the table, thinking of solutions that's out of the box. Mm -hmm. You're talking to people, you're getting perspective, you're expanding, you're growing. Mm -hmm. While on the effects side, there's nothing I can do. I just need to wait for them for mm -hmm. things to shift, for mm -hmm. example. Right. Diren, this sounds very similar to manifesting. Does it have anything to do with that? How do you regard manifesting? So I can't speak to manifesting mm -hmm. because it's not something that I practice. Mm -hmm. uh, I I like to refer to it as mental rehearsal. Mm -hmm. I like to refer to it in my practice. I and it's very similar to to manifesting. I guess you can say that, which is you know being really clear. And we were having this conversation about you know being clear on what are you optimizing for. Mm -hmm. So if there's a goal that you're trying to move toward or you're trying to achieve, what's the feeling mm -hmm. of having that in your life, mm -hmm. right? If I want to complete uh, an Ironman in sub 12 hours, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like how does that individual, that human being, right? Think, act and feel. Mm -hmm. So it's actually stepping into that mindset mm -hmm. even before it happens. Okay. Right. So you start thinking, acting and behaving in a different way, which now inevitably, because you're thinking, acting and feeling a different way, you're going to bring something new into your life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Instead of so, just imagining a future outcome. Right. Yeah. So I like manifest. I mean, manifesting to me is it. When I speak to leaders and I talk about manifesting or to a CFO, for example, it may go over their head. Of course. <laughs> right? It's like, what are you talking about? Right? Um, but when you talk about very, when you talk about it in an objective way that is, is very clear in terms of, you know, the blueprint, the approach that you take. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's the audit. This is how your team is thinking right now. We've mm -hmm. done an audit. Mm -hmm. These are the thoughts that they have. This is how they're acting. This is how they're feeling, right? So if you want to shift the culture, you have to change, to change a culture of an organization, you have to change each individual, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if, if, if there's a very clear blueprint or, or an appraisal mm -hmm. of the individuals in the team, now you are taking a more science-based approach to it. I love that. A more yeah. objective yeah. approach to it rather than, um, let's call it woo-woo. Yeah, right? I, I said that. Yeah. yeah, I said that term. Yeah. I love the fact that you can measure it, that it's measurable, and there are actually solid guidelines on how this can be done, yeah. right? As opposed to, like I was uh, telling you the other day, sometimes, you know, there are a lot of life coaches out there these days, and it's all based on fluff, or a lot of it is based on fluff and it's not measurable. But I like that in your practice, you can actually map out what needs to be done and you can see clearly how you're going to get there. Yeah. I mean, when, when, when you work with high performing individuals, they've read it's challenging. Mm -hmm. 
I'll tell you why it's challenging. They've read the books. Of course. They've attended the workshops. That's why the they're Tony there, Robbins, right? The Tony Robbins, the Dr. Mm-hmm. Joes, they've attended, they've seen it all, mm-hmm. right? They invest in their personal growth. And now you're working with them and you have to drive change, mm-hmm. right? So it has to be measurable. If it's not measurable, that relationship, that journey doesn't last, right? I love that. Yeah. I, I truly love that. I want to talk to you about hustle culture. Uh, but before that, let me thank our supporters, Rovo Hotels. Thank you again for always being a partner with us here at Challenger Brands. This is Challenger Brands. Please subscribe to our channel and share our content. Follow us on our agency's social media pages, illustrato.co, on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. Or subscribe to our newsletter via our website, www.illustrato.co. Thank you to our sponsors for today's episode. Rove Hotels. Rove Hotels are a jumping off point for city explorers, simply designed for the young and young at heart. Born in Dubai, Rove is an award-winning lifestyle brand offering well-designed hotels, fuss-free service, and great value in well-connected locations. More than just a bed for the night, Rove provides rovers the missing link to connect you to the city like a local and explore the track less trodden in a relaxed environment where you can be yourself. With sustainability, local art, and high-performing functionality at the heart of its brand, Rove represents a new niche of hospitality for the digital nomad looking to become part of the neighborhood, even when they're just passing through. Please check them out at rovehotels.com. Duren, you consider yourself as a conscious leader, right? I, I've seen that again uh, on your website, and you know you talk a lot about this in your in your podcast and in your content. What do you think about hustle culture and the so-called toxic productivity, mm. where people say, or, or a lot of you know the, the influencers, business influencers, they say that you have to spend most of your time breathing moments, just putting in the work, mm. and it feels like everything else has to wait. Yeah. How do you feel about that? So from from where, you know, from from my perspective, what I've observed from that, you know, that nonstop, always productive, always on, burning the candle on both ends, I think it's on the way out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I think the 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 millennials. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the generations that follow, Mm -hmm. they're so Mm purpose-focused and they're a lot more holistic in terms of how they view life. I agree with you. Right? I think so, yeah. And I think the pandemic has completely shifted the narrative Mm -hmm. wherein, you know, I I don't see it expanding. I, I actually see it you know, as as the opposite happening, I see it shrinking. I seeing it. I see it becoming less and less mm-hmm. relevant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's necessary to balance your life, right? Yeah, I mean, again, balance is something that I um, I don't subscribe to the word balance. Mm-hmm. I think it's mm-hmm. a myth, but but I think being on one extreme for an extended period of time. Mm-hmm will have consequences, mm-hmm. right? I mean, if we look at hustle culture, mm-hmm. we were talking about this on the break. I mean, the poster child of hustle culture is Elon Musk, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? Definitely. And I read his book recently and, you know, there's been a high price that he's had to pay mm-hmm. for, you know, that approach. Now, he went into it eyes wide open. He knew what it was costing him. Mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. What it was costing his health, his relationships, his friendships. He he knew what, you know, he was getting into. Mm-hmm. The danger with the hustle culture is when, and, and he has a really big purpose, right? I mean, I think our life, mm-hmm. everyone here, mm-hmm. our life is, you know, slightly better because he exists. Yeah. Right? So I think it, it works for some people, mm-hmm. but not for everybody. And for those who are looking at hustle culture and think, okay, you know what? Yeah, that's what I want to do. As long as you know what the consequences are, mm-hmm. right? I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Mm-hmm. I really don't. Um, as long as you know what 
it's going to cost you, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? Because there is a place for that in society mm-hmm. because those are the guys and the, the men and women that are going to really push the edge of innovation. Mm-hmm. They're going to create innovation that, you know, takes us from where we are mm-hmm. to the future, mm-hmm. right? It's it's that groundbreaking innovation that 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 requires that kind of mindset. We were talking about how you live your life earlier, yeah. right? Again, as a conscious leader, what's the advice to entrepreneurs in terms of the right mix of the outer and the inner game, you know, making sure that we have everything together? What, what's the right mix moving forward? The right mix in terms of the balance between inner yes. game, outer game. I don't game. want to use balance because I can't find the <laughs> word now that's correct for that. The harmony. But, harmony? Yeah. How do you determine this? Okay, I understand that you said that it's different for every person, but if there's some guidance that you can give to people out there who are trying to figure it out right now. I would say it's, it comes down to priorities, mm-hmm. right? It comes down to what is it that you really want, right? And and why, right? Most goals, I forget the stat, I think it's about 65 to 70% of goals are not achieved. And the reason they're not achieved is because the the driver for that goal is external. Mm -hmm. It's validation. It's, uh, you know, my my mom wants me to, you know, to really achieve this. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I was bullied as a kid and and now I have something to prove, Mm -hmm. right? And and I I think the, the funding for that or the motivation that comes from those external factors is finite. Mm -hmm. I think you come to a point where it runs out. So ultimately, it's important to really understand what is it that you want Mm -hmm. to your question earlier, you know, where are these entrepreneurs that, 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 you know, see coaching, it's they're trying to figure out what they want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, And I think, I mean, if you were to ask most people, what is it that you want? People will give you a very surface level answer, something trite, because they haven't really thought about it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and I think it's important to really understand why is it that we want, well, first, what do we want and why is it that we want that? Mm-hmm. Because if you really tap into the essence of that, it's coming from an authentic place mm-hmm. and, and that's your superpower, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. really. That's that's the superpower that's going to get you to achieve, mm-hmm. you know, unlimited potential. Yeah. And I truly believe in human potential. Mm-hmm. If we are able to really tap into what do we want and why? Understanding right? that will define what do we do next, right? Absolutely. Understanding that will define what we do next and will provide us with the resources, the energy more importantly, the energy, the clarity, the focus to be able to consistently mm-hmm. move in that direction in a sustainable way, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Well, now all of a sudden, you know, the the frame or the you know, the, the frame of mind shifts to I need to do it tomorrow, mm-hmm. right? To I'm playing the long game because it's coming from a place yeah. of authenticity, mm-hmm. right? So naturally, I think we find that harmony when we're doing things that are aligned with our values. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So to answer your question, Lelaine, it comes down to what are your priorities? Now, you may go through a phase. Maybe next year, the, f- the focus is the business, mm-hmm. right? And so maybe 70% of my energy is going to go to the business, right? But maybe in the back end of the year, it's going to be to focus on other aspects of mm-hmm, my life. Mm-hmm. And, and now it's going to shift, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So it's just being really aware of where's the focus in different phases. I, I like how kind this, um, this concept is, that you can actually shape it, right? What happens when... You're the director. I like that, yeah. You're the director, Definitely. the actor, and the, director the producer. Your life, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's all about self-leadership. What happens when a person who wants a specific outcome comes to you, but they're the kind of personality who's resistant to change? Ah. What do you do? Mm. Do you take them on? Is there an, a formula that, you know, what, what's, the, what's the secret sauce there? 
Is it rede- is it a redeemable situation? Absolutely. It's always redeemable. Mm-hmm. Always. So th- my question would be, why are they resistant to change? Right. Are they resistant to change because it's the unknown? Mm-hmm. And if it is, that's OK, because the, the unknown can be a scary mm-hmm. place. Mm-hmm. Right. We were talking about stepping into um, onto a stage. Do I still get you asked me? Yeah. Do I still get nervous? Absolutely. Because every stage is a new stage. Mm-hmm. Every audience is a new audience. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm a different person today than I was yesterday. Mm-hmm. Right. And and so you're going to have those nerves because you care, mm-hmm. right? And so the entrepreneur, or the, the individual that's resistant to change is, is holding on to what they're familiar to, mm-hmm. right? And so the, the process that I go through is trying to crystallize for them that the unknown is not a scary place. Mm-hmm. Because if you look, if you go back to the base level of our DNA, mm-hmm. right? The unknown meant death, mm-hmm. right? It was a threat to our life, yeah. right? So when we're in the unknown, we don't know what's going to happen next. We feel threatened, mm-hmm. right? So to actually take them through that journey of, of transformation and showing them that the unknown, that river of change, is, is not, it's a scary place, but it's not life-threatening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like it. So you work on that, conquering whatever is the impediment, right? Whatever yeah. is blocking them from taking that step. Absolutely. And and most of the impediments are our beliefs, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's it's all in between, you know, the six inches in between your ears, mm-hmm. right? So it really is the I inner like game. That. And And I always ask myself, one of the first questions I ask people that I work with is on a scale of one to 10, mm-hmm. how much do you trust yourself mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. on that spectrum? 10 being you know, unequivocal, Mm -hmm. you know, you trust yourself objectively. And, you know, and and usually the answer that I get is about six or seven. Mm -hmm. So what if you trusted yourself? Exactly. You know, more. It's crazy because you're talking to people who are already successful, you know, which is a quite an enviable situation for most other people, right? They've already um, achieved a certain level of success. And yet there's still to, a lot of things to be learned, in, yeah. in, you know, especially in terms of trusting yourself, right? Absolutely. What's the- Self-belief, old, I always say, one of my quotes is self-belief is not negotiable. Okay, folks, self-belief is non-negotiable. Please remember non-negotiable. that. Yeah. Last question for you today. A lot of people are still overwhelmed. It's 2024. What's the best thing that they can do to yank themselves out of this feeling of being stuck? How do you yank yourself from the feeling of being stuck? I mean, it really depends on what we're stuck with, but in terms of a general approach, I would say, I would say <laughs> controversial. Mm-hmm. I would say seek suffering, mm-hmm. seek difficult situations. Because, you know, in those difficult situations, put yourself in uncomfortable situations, right? And just linger in it Mm -hmm. because at the end of that discomfort is the next level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's about, I mean, we've all read the books, all your listeners who are listening to this podcast have read the books. They've listened to the podcasts. They've gone through this self-development journey. I think now it's about action, Mm -hmm. right? It's about, we we know what we need to do. Mm -hmm. We all know what we need to do. Right. But we're moving from one book to the next podcast, to the next uh, workshop, to the next masterclass. And we're not applying Mm -hmm. what we've learned. Mm -hmm. And I think now it's time that we start implementing. Mm -hmm. We stop learning new things and just start implementing what we've already learned. Get going, people. We, We need to get going. We need to, and, and the, the second thing I would say is find someone who's going to hold you accountable. Mm-hmm. Have an accountability partner. The power That's of super that important. is so important. right? Especially for entrepreneurs. It's uh, a lonely place. Absolutely. I, mm-hmm. I got stuck recently in my, I'm still stuck actually, in my endurance journey. Mm-hmm. I've lost that spark. And I have a big race coming up in June, a really big race. 
and I've been preparing for it for nine months. And I've never been in, a, in this situation where and I'm not feeling that, that drive, that motivation. Mm -hmm. And the, one of the catalysts toward moving me to get that spark back has been my community, mm -hmm. my tribe, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And, and just being surrounded by people who are a couple of steps ahead of me. Mm -hmm and seeing what they're doing that I'm not doing, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And just watching and observing. I love that. Yeah. So guys, just summarizing that, get uncomfortable, put yourself in an uncomfortable situation. It's time to implement and get other people to help you. Yes. Thank you so much, Duren. This was such a great conversation. And please, can you invite people to your program if you have some uh, workshops coming up or you have some recurring uh, programs? I actually have company? a retreat. I have a retreat coming up mm -hmm. on the 27th of January. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a retreat uh, where the setting is in, um, it's called the Master Your Inner Game Retreat. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the setting is in nature mm -hmm. where we take 12 to 15 humans through a journey of transformation in a 24 hour period. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's a high octane, wow. uh, very intense, process mm. of stepping into the unknown. Mm -hmm. um, so that's on the 27th of January. Outside of that, my programs um, are on my website, thereinhartshandani.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's where people can find me. We're going to share all your links. I was going to say that I want to attend that workshop, but then I thought high octane. <laughs> I need to master that. There you go. You're more than welcome to. <laughs> Something to, to work you. on. Yeah. But thank you so much for spending your time with us, Diren. I'm sure a lot of people have learned so much today. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right. Super. Thank you, guys. And we'll see you in another episode of Challenger Brands. Bye-bye. Please subscribe to our channel and share our content. For more actionable insights on brand and business building, follow us on our agency's social media pages, illustrato.co, or subscribe to our newsletter via our website, www.illustrato.co.